Hi and welcome back to the channel. My name is Dr. Maddie, your doctor from the UK. Today we're going to be taking another look back at the anime Hajime no Ippo after so many of you liked my previous video about Takamura's extreme weight cutting. And keeping on the topic of controversy in this sport, we're going to be looking at the association between head trauma and the development of CTE, otherwise more commonly known as being punch drunk. Now, to do this, we're going to be looking at the Kamagawa history arc, and we're going to be using his best friend Nakato as a case example. We'll mainly be looking at its common symptoms, how it progresses, and how you might go about making a diagnosis. So, if you've always been curious about this topic, let's begin. <laughs> Okay, so in this first scene we see that Nekota drops this cup and his hand begins to shake. Now, the medical word for these shaking spells are what we would call tremors, and this is derived from the French word tremeur, which means an involuntary shaking. And in a boxer who's experienced some head injury, we would call these post-traumatic tremors, and they're quite common. Mostly they occur after damage to the cerebellum, which is part of the brain that sits at the back of the skull. The cerebellum is the part of the brain that coordinates our movements, so the fact that Nekoto here isn't able to coordinate grabbing this cup would suggest that this area has been damaged. However, the fact that he's exhibiting these symptoms doesn't mean that he has any permanent brain damage yet, as these symptoms can be quite short-lived and resolved with time. <laughs> Now, Nekoto seems to be worrying about some numbness in his hand, and again, this isn't necessarily a sign of any permanent brain damage. Now, if we look at the nerve supply to the hand, we can see that it comes off of C7, C8 spinal root, which exits the spine at the level of the base of the neck. And you can argue that this area takes the brunt of the force of a punch to the head as it's trying to keep your head attached to your shoulders. Again, these symptoms are likely to be temporary and they're likely to improve, if not resolve, so long as you don't get any further trauma to the head or neck. <laughs> And of course, Kamagawa is referring to Hiroshima in the context of the nuclear blasts, which means that Yuki is suffering from radiation poisoning, which in of itself is a ticking time bomb. The main insult that the body sustains from radiation poisoning is to the immature stem cells that are found at various parts of the body. Now imagine these stem cells were destroyed and you are unable to replace old dead cells. Once you understand this concept, you can begin to appreciate the devastating impact that this can have on the body. For example, it can suppress the cells in your bone marrow, which can lead to anemia, as well as reducing your general immunity to trivial illnesses. It can also affect the gut in a similar way, leading to dehydration and severe internal bleeding. I mean, the list goes on. Poor Yuki. それより飲んで今買ってきたのと同じ服さ着てるだに。え、猫田さんからいただいたんですよ。この服好きなんですね。2着目ですよ。バカな。記憶にないだに。Okay, and now we're beginning to see evidence of more brain trauma. Nekoto is beginning to lose his memory, and it looks like it seems to be affecting his short-term memory. Now, short-term memories are stored in part of the brain called the hippocampus. This is a complex structure that's found in the temporal lobe on the side of the brain, an area which is vulnerable to damage during boxing. Now, it's not uncommon that if you sustain a concussion that you can suffer from a level of memory loss or amnesia. However, the level of amnesia that's normally seen tends to be brief and specific around the event that caused the concussion. Therefore, the fact that the amnesia is affecting him daily would suggest that there's been greater damage than that from a concussion alone. <laughs> And again, we see this tremor returning with Nekoto reporting headaches, as well as the feeling of being imbalanced. 
Again, these symptoms are quite common with a concussion and can take several months to resolve. And just to give you an idea of how debilitating these headaches can be, they can often be triggered by simple things such as thinking, physical activities, bright lights, or even just trying to work. Now Nekoto is beginning to ask really important questions. Are these changes going to be temporary or are they going to be permanent? With Nekoto beginning to realize that something within him has physically changed and may never return back to what it once was. And really, this is the topic of today's video, being punch drunk. Now, the term punch drunk was initially coined to describe the classical symptoms of confusion, disorientation, memory loss, and increasing impulsive behavior that was found in boxers. However, we now know that the condition isn't only isolated to boxers, but can affect anyone who's playing in a sport where there's a potential for them sustaining a head injury, whether that's rugby, football, or even ice hockey, but to name a few. And so the term punch drunk is no longer really used. In fact, it's been replaced by the term chronic traumatic encephalopathy. And breaking that down, chronic is to mean long lasting, traumatic of course referring to the trigger of all of this, and encephalopathy meaning a disease that affects the functioning of the brain. Now determining whether Nekoto has this chronic traumatic encephalopathy or CTE for short can only really be established on post-mortem when you have a look at slices of the brain under a microscope. However, we can have a suspicion that this is the cause of his symptoms because we've seen previous boxers present in a similar way. Again here, Nekato is asking very important questions in how this is going to progress. And the condition of CTE can really be broken down into four individual stages. Stage one includes symptoms of headaches, as well as loss of attention and concentration. Stage two, those with CTE find themselves suffering from mood swings, short-term memory loss, in addition to those symptoms found in stage one. Moving on to stage three, in addition to stage two symptoms, sufferers may also develop depression, aggressive behaviors, visuospatial difficulties, loss of emotions, and suicidality has also been noted. And finally, stage four, the most severe stage of CTE. Sufferers can lose control of their executive function and develop severe dementia. Also, studies have shown that they suffer from a profound loss of attention and concentration, as well as movement disorders like Parkinsonism. And this raises a question about one of the greatest fighters, Muhammad Ali, and whether he was in fact suffering from CTE rather than Parkinson's disease. Now, I'm not sure whether he had a post-mortem and whether a diagnosis of CTE was made, but could the fact that he sustained multiple head injuries throughout his boxing career have contributed to his disabling condition by the end of his life? So yeah, and this is one of those things that I really love about anime, the beautiful use of metaphors in those moments of pause between action scenes. I feel it gives the viewer the opportunity to pause and reflect on the different characters' situations and begin to feel something towards them. And it's this that I think Hajime no Ippo does so well and what makes it a great anime. So Nekoto has organized a fight with Anderson and some might argue that this was quite an impulsive move and something that wasn't really thought through well as earlier in the anime we see both Kamogawa and Nekoto together being beaten up by him. Could this impulsivity be a feature of his CTE that is beginning to have a bearing on his decision making? <laughs> Advantage, 
Interestingly, this tremor is something which is re-featuring in many different scenes, and some of you at home might be thinking, you get a tremor in Parkinson's disease, why does he have it? Well, it's been found on post-mortem that there's a loss of neurons as well as a deposition of a harmful protein in part of the brain called the substantia nigra. Now, this area of the brain is also interestingly implicated in Parkinson's disease, so there seems to be some overlap between the two conditions. <laughs> <laughs> and what a cool scene. But the fact that he's able to control the tremor in this scene is a very interesting detail. And that's because, broadly speaking, there are only really two kinds of tremor. You have, firstly, the resting tremor, which is very common in Parkinson's disease, and it tends to improve on movement. Whereas, on the other hand, you have an intention tremor, which tends to be worse on movement and improves on rest. So this little detail is quite accurate for someone who's suffering from CTE. And as Kamogawa says here, there is a way for a lighter fighter to defeat a heavier opponent, so long as he goes for these vital points. But what are these vital points? Well, an example of one of them might be a punch to the liver. We've spoken in my previous video how this stimulates the vagus nerve, which causes the, the parasympathetic nervous system to become overwhelmed, causing a drop in your blood pressure and heart rate, and can cause you to collapse. <laughs> And here we see the real benefit of Nekoto being lighter than his opponent. It makes him more agile, and the fact that he's used to fighting people within his weight class who are similarly as agile as he is would mean that his reflexes were accustomed to fast throwing jabs. And this really shows through when you're fighting a bulkier opponent or someone of a higher weight class whose body type makes them less agile and therefore make them a slower fighter. I remember watching some of the heavyweight fights and you don't see them dodging and ducking under each other's punches, you tend to see them leaning on each other quite a lot. <laughs> So yes, this is a really good question. How is Nakato able to fight despite being punch drunk? Well, I suspect a lot of this is down to his training as well as the very nature of CTE's progression. You don't go from being fine one day to disabled the next. It's a chronic progressive disease. Now, of course, head injuries can speed up this process, but it's not to say that you can't utilize your trained body to fight and avoid punches like Nekoto is in this scene. And if we remember from earlier, Nekoto has acknowledged that this is his last fight, so he's probably going all out. Oi, Nekoto, Gong, Narzo! Gong. Ah, ah, so ka. Gong, ga, naru ka. Chose cruise, Nekoto, Natsu. Jukutsu, ishite yagatta. So clearly here, Nakato is spacing out and not being able to hold his concentration or attention to the point where he's falling asleep, which is very alarming. Now, interestingly, there is a link between CTE and REM sleep disorders. Now, just a bit more on REM sleep disorders. Now, these occur when the paralysis that normally occurs during REM sleep is incomplete or absent. This causes individuals to act out their dreams by talking, flailing their arms and legs, punching and kicking, grabbing, and even more. And while it's estimated that 1% of the population suffer from REM sleep disorders, scientists found that 32% of contact sport athletes with CTE had experienced some symptoms of this disorder. <laughs> Oh! <gasps> 
Ah, and the infamous rabbit punch. Now the dangers with this kind of punch is that it can cause damage to the cervical vertebra as well as the underlying spinal cord. This could cause an irreparable spinal injury and that's why there's a zero tolerance for it in this sport. <laughs> And what we're seeing here are the effects of the brain being rattled and the inability to focus on the here and now in what we would call disorientation. It's interesting that the word disorientation comes from the French word disorienteur, which means to lose one's bearings, which is exactly what's happened here. <laughs> So Nekoto discloses that his symptoms began after a fair fight with Kamogawa. And this is a really interesting point. Most boxers will think that so long as they avoid heavy head punches during a boxing fight, that they're not going to develop these symptoms. However, it's been shown that multiple minor head injuries over a longer period of time can also contribute to the development of CTE. And even in sparring, despite you wearing complete headgear, there is really no way of knowing about the damaging effects that a head injury would sustain. If you think about it, it's quite bizarre. In the sport, they don't allow low blows to protect the genitalia. However, what's the point in having the genitalia if you don't have a brain to use them? Oh god, this is pretty hard to watch. I mean, I didn't realize that a referee couldn't stop the match if you were still standing on your feet. I mean, you would have thought that it was pretty obvious that Nekoto had been knocked out at this stage. And what an emotional scene where we see a lovable character getting beat down on by an unfair opponent. I really do hope that Kamagawa kicks his ass. Ah, permanent brain damage. Poor Nakato. But this is a good scene to give a description about the structural changes that occur in the brain with someone who develops CTE. If we look at some normal brain compared to a brain affected by CTE, we can see that the affected brain is far smaller. There is far less brain tissue generally, which is something that we see with people with dementia. In addition, and probably one of the defining features of CTE, is the deposition of a protein called tau protein. Now this deposits itself around small blood vessels in the brain, also affecting astrocyte cells, which are cells that help to regulate the growth and development of nervous tissue and their connections. But as I said earlier, these findings can only be confirmed after the patient has died and has had a post-mortem, so diagnosis is often retrospective. <laughs> Sorry to leave you on a cliffhanger in today's video, but we will pick up the story following Kamagawa's training against his big fight against Anderson, and we'll be looking at this in one of my upcoming videos. If there's anything specific about that fight that you'd like me to break down, please do let us know, and of course I'll be breaking down whether it's realistic for someone to develop an iron fist. Otherwise, if I could get you to like this video and comment down below if there's any other Hajime no Ippo clips that you'd like me to break down. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.